Good morning. This is Morning Coffee with Jesus. I'm Rebecca and today I have my sister Rachel. Hi. Today we're going to be talking about how to study the Bible. I've been asked this question a lot recently about how do you actually study the Bible instead of just reading a verse? How do you actually get in depth into the Word of God? So go ahead, get your Bible, get your coffee because we are going to study the Word of God together. Welcome back. So we're talking about how we personally study the Bible. Now, there are so many different ways that we can study the Bible. So we're not saying one way is better than another. Each person's going to find a unique way that they enjoy studying the Bible. Absolutely. You're about to find out we have two different ways of studying the Word of God. As we were talking about this the other day, uh, Rachel's like, wow, that is not how I study the Bible at all. So you're going to see Different personalities are going to do things different, so you may like one over the other, but we just want to kind of give you a little bit of guidance on how we got into the Word of God and what we do to study. So go ahead, introduce yourself, tell everybody what you want to say here. Hi, I am Rachel Guzman. I am her sister, of course, as she told you earlier. Um, I'm excited to be here with you guys and ready to talk about how we study. All right. So first... I want to show you guys the foundation scripture that we're going to stand on this morning of the importance of why we actually study the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to Joshua 1, 8, and it says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So here, we're supposed to be meditating on the word day and night. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times, some people get the one time a day. But here, it's actually telling us to do it first thing yeah. and last thing. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you're just continue to stay built up. And it makes your day so much better. You're more productive. You accomplish actually what you set out to do. Um, as moms, we know our schedule is completely booked and you got things going on all the time. And so it can be hectic trying to set aside that quality time for just you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> but when we read this verse, it tells us that it's important, it's vital, that we need to do this, we need to meditate. Right. And by meditating, it's not just something that you open up real quick and you're like, okay, good, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Meditating is like you are involved. Right. You are enjoying that time. You are in there seeking to find something. Right. So, do you want to start or do you want me to start? You go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, here's a little highlight of how I study the Word of God. Now, when I first um, started getting into the Word, you don't really know what to do. Mm -hmm. So, what I did was I started in Matthew, and I read the New Testament, and then I went back and read Genesis and all of the Old Testament. And then by doing this, it allowed me to find different scriptures that popped out to me, ones that I was like, oh gosh, I know I'm going to need this throughout life. Not that we wouldn't use all of them, but there was key ones that really spoke to me. Right. And so when I found one, then I'm like, oh, I like this. Well, I'm a list person. Mm -hmm. I like to organize things. I like to color code things. And so with that, it helps me. So what I did was in the back of my Bible here, I wrote down different topics and then I color coded them. I know you'll probably think I'm crazy, but if you're one of those people, you, you're loving me right now. So here's the ones that I wrote down that I've colored in my Bible. Yellow is um, wise instruction. Purple is parenting, red is salvation, green is healing, blue, marriage, orange, children, and pink, prosperity. So these are key ones that I knew that I was going to be using throughout my life. Right. And so when I did that, when I read and I found one that was about healing, I grabbed my green highlighter and I would go and highlight it. So I'm just going to kind of flip through here. Hopefully y'all can see. So I've got some colors. Um, in the Bible here. And so anytime I need a healing scripture, I can go and find a green one. 
uh, and then I can read that. So it's real quick, easy access, so I'm not struggling and going, oh my gosh, where was that verse found, and then trying to find it. And if you've ever been anywhere without internet, then you're kind of, oh gosh, I don't remember. So true. it kind of helps me to flip through something fast, easy, and I'm not, you know, left blindsided on, I can't find anything to stand on. Right. So each year, um, my goal is to start at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year, to read the Bible again. And so the more I go through it, the more something else will pop out to me, and I'll add some colors. Um, and then, of course, I add notes and all that stuff in there. So each year I'm adding something different to it that I didn't get the previous year. Hmm. So I know a lot of people are like, well, you read the Bible once, so who cares? No, you can read it a hundred times and I guarantee you, you're going to get something new out of it each time. It's just like if you watch a movie mm -hmm. and the first time you watch the movie, you're like, oh, that was so good. Then you watch it again, you're like, oh, how did I miss that? And then you watch it again. Now you're watching all the people in the background. Right? Yeah. So now you see, um, you know, oh, her hair was in front, but they missed it. Now her hair is in the back, right? Mm -hmm. So every time you watch it again, you can pick out something new out of it. Same thing with the Word of God. There's so much revelation and so much depth to it that it doesn't matter how many times you read it, you're going to get something new out of it. Right. So go ahead and let them know the difference between the way I do it and the way you do it. Yeah, so um, my sister is a little bit more organized than I am. I'm pretty organized too, but she's very organized. So the way that I actually <laughs> started to study the Word is um, literally I would start out in prayer because I'm like, okay, I, I don't really know how to read the Bible. Yes, I know that you, know, you could read from Matthew to Revelation, but it's actually not really in order. Um, so when I'm like really wanting to even study for a message, I, I'll start in prayer first and literally God will just drop a, a scripture in my spirit and I'm like, oh yeah. And so then I'll turn to that scripture. I'll read that scripture. And like she was saying, we, I'll meditate on it. And then another scripture comes up. So then I go to that next scripture. So literally that's how I can go through it. Um, another way that I like to, if I'm looking for a specific like topic, because I don't always have my hard Bible with me, um, I suggest everybody to get the Bible app on your phone, the U version. That's my favorite one because if you're looking for a certain topic, you just push the search button, and literally it has, you know, what does the Bible say about love, peace, faith, healing, marriage. You know, anything that you need, and you just push that little topic, and it actually will tell you all the different scriptures that you need for that topic. Um, so I, for one, I, I always have my phone with me. Literally, I it, there's not a time that I don't. So that's, most, this is my most, of us most convenient way for me. I don't have an excuse now. You know, I have my phone with me even when I'm at my kid's doctor's office. Yeah. And, you know, like, I have it everywhere that I go, so I have no excuse as to I can just pull it up right. and study the Word right there, wherever I'm at. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, I mean, I do the same thing. I have I have the U version on my phone, and it sets me a reminder every single yes. day and lets me know, hey, did you read the verse for the day? Exactly. And then there's multiple plans on there that you can start, which mm -hmm. is what I started doing now. Um, to read the Bible in a year, right? You can actually find that on there. There's different ones. There's like you can do it in chronological order. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it in. Gosh, there's so many different orders yeah. that you can read yeah. it in, um, which is what I'm doing right now in chronological order. Yes. Because um, I want to read it in the way that it actually took place. Right. And um, so that's pretty cool too because it tells you if you read these chapters and then you'll read this the next day. Mm -hmm. So by the time you're at the end of the year. You read the whole Bible. Yeah. And um, it doesn't seem like, oh my gosh, I've got so much more to go mm -hmm. because it's already planned it out for you. And right. so it just kind of takes that planning away. Right. If you're not a planner or even if you are, it's it's still nice to have. It's already mapped out. Right. <laughs> um, another thing I like to do if I can't have the internet and I have my Bible with me in the back of your Bible. I don't know if y'all knew this, but there are word um, suggestions in there. So after Revelation, you'll go and you'll you'll see this concordance 
in the back and it starts with a and it has a list of words down it so like pretty much whatever it is that's going on in your life that you're like I need a scripture for that so we'll look on here abundant okay well maybe you need some abundance or something so yeah. you can look underneath that it'll give you a scripture for it you can turn to it right and that may be one you want to write some notes beside right. it or one you want to remember or hang up um, on your mirror or something like that because that's another thing that helps me a lot is if I write something out you're more likely to remember it that's true so despite my wonderful handwriting <laughs> I like to write it out and have it in front of me so mm -hmm. I can see it there's three scriptures that Jason and I have right now in our bathroom because we go there every single day yeah. okay so I have it in a place that I know I'm going to see it right and so we have two mirrors in our bathroom and it's right there in the middle mm -hmm. so every morning while we're getting ready that's what we see mm -hmm. and so we can be brushing our teeth brushing our hair whatever and we can say those three scriptures yep it's fast easy and you're constantly confessing the word of God so it's getting on the inside of you mm -hmm. so it I don't know to me that helps and I know I've seen just you growing up too you like your little sticky notes mm -hmm. and so you'll have sticky notes all over the place um, I remember when you were believing for your husband that you had tons of yeah. sticky notes everywhere and you just kind of had them all over and it just kind of kept you focused on this is what I'm believing for this is what the Word of God says I can have and that's why it's so important that we read the Word of God because without the Word of God we are just kind of wandering around hoping we're doing the right thing and thinking we'll see if this works exactly and I think it's funny because you know growing up even before I was married and things like that, I would hear multiple times parents say, oh, man, there's no guide. Like, there's no training. There's no nothing to prepare you to be a parent. And now that I'm a parent, I'm like, they were wrong. That is not true. Yeah, exactly. I was like, the Word of God has so many scriptures about marriage, about parenting, about how to discipline your children, how your children are supposed to act. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all in there. If yep. we take time to do some research, which is why we're talking about this this morning, the importance of getting under the Word of God and how to do it, it'll change your life forever. Because then you're like, well, I know exactly what to do in that situation because this is what God told me to do. Right. Exactly. Well, even if it didn't, hey, let me go find it because I'll right. find the answer. <laughs> yeah. Right. Know, give me just a couple minutes. I'll yeah. find it for you. Um, it's in here. I know it is. So my son, uh, Jared, he's seven. And he came home the other day, and he had this little bookmark that they gave him at school. And um, he's in a private school in Sherman. And it was so cool that we were talking about this this week because I'm like, this goes great. So <clears throat> I'm going to pop this picture up for you guys if y'all can't see it very well. But what it is, it's um, a bookmark that he has, but it lists every book in the Bible, and it tells you what category what it's about mm -hmm. so like for instance genesis through deuteronomy is the law mm -hmm. the old testament law um, joshua through esther is history uh, job through song of solomon poetry and wisdom isaiah through daniel is major prophets hosea through malachi is minor prophets matthew through john is the gospels acts is history of the new testament romans through philemon is letters of Paul, Hebrews through Jude is general letters, and Revelation is prophecy. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that is really important because sometimes you're like, oh, I don't understand what's going on. What are they, who's talking? Who wrote this? Why are we talking to these people? Mm -hmm. So la was it last year? Last year or the year before, I took time to do some research uh, on... The different books of the Bible so what I did in the front of my Bible is I wrote who wrote that book of the Bible right because sometimes it's important to know the writer yeah who's doing the writing here mm -hmm. what perspective is this coming from right and so I'm not gonna go through this list um, I can try and post some stuff in there for you but I, like I said a lot of books of the Bible tells us who wrote it. There's a couple in there that it doesn't say who wrote that particular book. But 
when you go through and you read it and you're like, oh, they wrote that. Okay. Right. And so sense. then you see the time that they were living in. Was Jesus already here? Was this before Jesus? Was this after he died on the cross? Mm -hmm. So you're getting the perspective of why they're saying what they're saying. Because the Old Testament is the covenant before Jesus had died for our sins and rose. So the Old Testament is talking about the Old Covenant. That's before Jesus died and rose again. The New Testament is the new covenant we have. That's the one after Jesus rose and, and died and all that. And if you don't understand the two, it's going to be hard for you to understand different things that are taking place to these people. Because in the Old Testament, they would bring sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And they would, you know, kill an animal and they would bring it to cover their sins. Whereas in the New Testament... We don't have to do that because Jesus is that right. sacrifice. He covered our sin for us. Mm -hmm. We just simply have to ask for forgiveness, for repentance. True. And so it's vital that you understand there's an Old Testament and there's a New Testament. And they mean two different things as far as our covenant that we are now in. Amen. Is there a verse you want to go to? Oh, yeah. Um, there was two verses that I had written down. Hebrews 4 12 it says for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart so you know when I'm like studying the Bible like I, I always think about that like it doesn't matter what's coming at me, like, this is my two-edged sword. Right. Like, I have to have this in order to get through things in everyday life. Yeah. Because if I'm just throwing out mere words, that's not going to change anything. But if I'm speaking out the word, then it is going to change whatever I'm going right. through. So that's one of the, you know, the scriptures that I really enjoy because, you know, he's telling us that's basically our, yeah. our sword that we need. Um, and then Proverbs 4 in verse 20 in the New King James Version as well um, it says my son give attention to my words and climb your ear to my sayings do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh mm -hmm. Well, there you go. If you're sick, mm -hmm. hey, he just told you what you need. You need yeah. the Word of God. You need the Word. He said that you need to keep it in front of your eyes, that it's life to your flesh. Well, hello. I want to stay, you know, alive as long as possible. So I'm going to be, you know, putting the, the Word of God in my mouth so that I can have them and, and live a long life. Yeah. No, that's perfect because we do. So many people don't understand the importance of having the Word of God in front of them daily mm -hmm. because they're like well I went to church this week so yeah. I'm good I'm covered and there's some religions that don't encourage people to read the Bible right and so we want to make sure that you watching know that it is vital it is a key to your success and your prosperity mm -hmm. by reading the Word of God you're gonna tap into so many different principles and when you start applying them oh my gosh you're like why have I not been doing this exactly. the whole time? I mean, it's a game changer. It really does. It, it changes is. everything. So another verse I want to go to because I want to emphasize on the importance mm -hmm. of what the Word of God does, like the benefits mm -hmm. of reading the Word of God. So we have 2 Timothy 3.16. Okay, so it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Well, that's good to know. Amen. We're reading. God's spoken word, right? Exactly. And it's profitable. So here's what it's profitable for, okay? Pay attention. For doctrine, or we could say teaching. Right. Uh, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, mm -hmm. thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Think about that. When we're reading this, not only is he teaching us, he's guiding us, but sometimes correction's needed. 
We all don't want correction. I know. Trust me. We need it. No one likes it. Everybody needs it. But if you're willing to accept that correction, hey, everything works properly. Um, So an example of this is if you've ever been working on the computer and it's not working right and you're like upset with it and you can complain about the computer. You can be like, it's broken. It's messed up. And then an IT guy comes over and it's like, and then all of a sudden it works, and you're like, oh, I guess it was my fault. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's operator error. Well, God can be saying, hey, if you click the right button, this will work for you. Mm-hmm. And so taking that correction as not something that he's beating us up about, mm-hmm. but he's only doing it because he loves us. Yeah. I mean, if you have kids, I hope you love them. <laughs> and... You don't want them to hurt themselves. Right. So when they're young, you start teaching them, hey, fire's hot, this is will hurt you, don't jump on this. You know, you're showing them, you're correcting them because you know the consequences of yeah. what could possibly happen to them. So God's doing the same thing. He only corrects the ones he loves. So, man, we should be like, God loves me? So he's correcting me? Yeah. That's how he does it. He he corrects the ones that he loves. And it tells us that. Though. Can I say one thing? Yeah. Um, because when you were saying that, it just came up that if you don't take in correction, then you can't grow. That's right. So in order to grow to the next level, you have to have that. Because I was also thinking about an example of my own okay. you know, <laughs> kid. Um, that, you know, it's like he will like play with a certain toy. And, you know, you have to push a certain button in order for it to, to work right. right. Well, he's sitting there struggling with it like, oh, I can't get it open. <laughs> and so he puts it down and he's like, you know, like, it's no good. No, let me help you. I show him how to do it. Oh, okay. Yep. Now, so he got that correction of, yes, it does work. You know, here's how it works. Yep. Now he can figure out how to play with it. Mm-hmm. So he's growing and learning how to how to do it. It's the same thing with us. Like, oh, my goodness, this is not working. Well, God's like, hold on. Let me show you. You know, let's change this part. Right. And now we can get back to where we need to go and we can go higher. Yeah. I mean... Just like kids have to take correction, we as adults have to take correction too. It doesn't Mm -hmm. stop. Uh, I was telling my kids the other day, because they were like, why is it you always get to make the rules? You know, they're (laughs) they're at that age. And I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, your Nini is my mom, and she still tells me what to do. Uh And they were like, what? (laughs) I was like, it doesn't end. It's it's a never-ending thing. I was like, one day you'll be a parent, you'll understand. But it's just funny, because you're like, no, no. You're all, you always have to respect your elders. You have right. to make sure that you are, you know, not disrespecting your parents just because you're an adult and have kids of your own. Right. I mean, they taught and trained you. Right. So, you know, you got to keep showing the same respect and love because now you understand what they went through. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so another thing that we can see that the word is, we can read this in John 17, 17. It says, sanctify them by your truth your word is truth well how cool is that we're in a world of people who lie Mm -hmm. a lot and here it's saying the word is truth so it doesn't matter if you've been lied to your whole life if everyone has messed you around this is truth Mm -hmm. and that man it shines so much more light on things because if you have been lied to multiple times, you can have a trust issue to where you're like, oh, I don't know if that's really going to happen for me. Well, God's word is true. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and right. that will never change. So this is constant. Yes. So you can go to this for answers and say, okay, it said it was true, so I'm going to believe it. Amen. And when you start getting those um, results taking place in your life, it builds your confidence up. And you're like, oh, wow. Okay, well, let me try another one. Yeah. <laughs> so you find another one, you're like, well, let me do this one. And then that one works. And you're like, man, then you want to read the whole thing because you want to just do everything and find out what else can I have. Exactly. And it's it's just so awesome. It really is. I mean, we hope that this is making sense to you guys this morning because the Bible shouldn't be something we're reading as a textbook. It shouldn't be reading as... Oh, that's something that happened forever ago. It doesn't apply to me. 
you know, people now will be like, well, that was back then, but it's completely different now. Everything in here, it's happened before. Right, yeah, there's nothing that you you are going through or have gone through that's not already in the Bible. Exactly, absolutely. And it may be, you know, they're talking about they used a different currency or, you know, different ways of putting it. They had a king, we had a president, you know, different yeah. things like that. But it all mm -hmm. goes along together. Right. Anything that you need answers for is in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to help you. So if you guys can't find a scripture verse for it, message us. Let us know so we can right. get the Word out there to you. I mean, give us a little bit to find it, right. but I can guarantee you we will pray. We will get some wisdom from God to get the answer that you guys are needing this morning. Morning Coffee with Jesus at Hamel.com. Social media, however, leave a comment here and we will send you the verse that you are desiring. But the next verse I want to go to um, is John 8 32, and you have that pulled up, I think. Yes, it says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, amen. See, we just read that his word is truth, mm -hmm. and here it's saying, The truth is what? It's going to make, make us free. free. Now, most people misquote that verse, yes. and they say that it's going to set them free. Right. Okay, well, what's the difference here? When you're saying set, that means someone is saying, okay, I've opened the door, you're free, go ahead, do what you want to do. Right. Here, it's saying, make you free. Mm -hmm. It's forcing you free. It's saying, you're not going to stay here anymore. I'm going to push you yep. to a higher level. God is trying to enable you. He's trying to excel you faster. He's not trying to say, okay, go figure it out all on your own. Yep. No, we just read that his word is there for teaching, That's right. for guidance. And so he's like, hey, I've given you everything you need. I have equipped you. Now let's go do this thing. Right. And if he has that much confidence in us, wow. Think about that. Sometimes I feel like God thinks more highly of us than we do. Come on. <laughs> because they're like, oh, Lord, I am not worthy. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, the other day I was writing something, and my son was writing something, and I was like, man, you have so much better handwriting than me. And I'm like, that's funny, you know, like, because even as an adult, we can put ourselves down, mm -hmm. be like, oh, you're better at that than me. Yeah. Oh, you sing better. Oh, you have, you know, a higher education. And we put ourselves down for it. Yeah. Well, God's saying, hey, let me teach you. Let me give you that higher education. Right. So you can feel qualified. Right. So you have that confidence and you're seeing it through. Right. I mean, it, it's amazing. It really is. And like I said, if you guys are kind of taking hold of what we're saying this morning, we are encouraging you to go read the word for yourself. Amen. You can listen to person after person tell you what you should do, but if you're not the one putting action to it, it's not going to change anything for you. It's just like if, you know, someone is teaching you how to become a millionaire, but you don't do what they're telling you to do. Right. It's not going to work for it's you. It's like they didn't tell you how to do it at all. Right. We have to do what it says. Mm -hmm. You have to put it to work and not to be like, oh, that sounds good. All right, Lord, if you want me to have it, I'll have it. Be doers of the word, That's not hearers right. only. You have to be. So like you're saying, if you don't put the action to what the Bible is telling you to do, yeah. then you're just being a hearer and you're just letting things go by. But yeah. if you'll take action, then... It can happen for you, too. Right. It's just like a farmer. Yeah. If they have the seed, that's great. But they still have to plant it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. If they're going to expect something to grow. Mm -hmm. So we hope you guys got something out of this this morning. Um, we did a really quick overview, kind of how we study the Word of God. We would love to hear how you study, though. Um, give us some suggestions that we may have not thought of before. We'd love to hear those things. Um, are you a color coder or are you more of an electronic type person? Um, let us know. Um, leave us a comment and say, hey, we like this. Give us a, a thumbs up. I'm sure I'll be having my sister back on with me soon. Um, I'm possibly thinking for Valentine's, I might do a couple session like you and Jacob, which is her husband, and um, Jason, my husband, 
But it's not going to be about relationships, so I'm going to keep the topic a secret for now. But you guys don't want to miss it. Hopefully they'll join us. I'm going to talk them into it. I'm sure I can twist some strings there since we're family. Yeah. Um, but you guys don't want to miss it. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye.